testing and documenting solutions then very short but a lot of really important theory to know here so first of all you have the three different categories that test data can fall into so in order to fully test your program you should uh, complete a variety of different tests you should be planning out your tests before you carry them out planning out the inputs uh, the expected outputs and then comparing that to the actual outputs which will allow you to see if your program's working correctly. And now, the first type of test are normal tests. And how we would describe these are any tests where you input data that is within an allowable range. So if you take, for example, the months of birth as an integer, you would only be able to enter data that's greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 12. So any normal tests would be from the numbers 2 until 11, including all the ones in between. And they're within the boundaries of expected input. Extreme test data is where you test on the boundaries of a livable input. And for the same example, the only two that you could really test are right on the boundaries are 1 and 12. An exceptional test data is to test how your program works with inputs that are out with the allowable range and really robust programs should be able to deal with users entering in string data when they're supposed to enter integers and any data that falls out with the range is known as exceptional test data so entering 100 for that same example or minus 10 or our class's favourite to write down the name of your, su your favourite superhero there are also three types of errors that you can encounter when you're programming them and i'm sure over the course of this year you'll have made several of each because every programmer does and these are syntax execution and logic errors so syntax errors are really straightforward is where you break the rules of how the programming language is supposed to be typed execution errors are when your program actually runs that causes errors in execution when it's actually been compiled and run and some errors that you may make are forgetting to initialize and declare variables logic errors are the really tricky ones and this is the one that we use normal extreme and exceptional test data to try and find now your program should run and execute no problem it should accept the inputs and produce outputs and this is usually where you would make mistakes in the, the thought process, the thinking, the logic behind your program. And for the example we're using before for the days, or sorry, the, the months of birth from 1 to 12, some of the usual logical errors are using greater than when you mean to use less than, or greater than or equal to when you mean to use one of the other comparators. Or a huge problem for loads of people is the difference between or and and. And in an and, comparison both parts or all parts of an and must be true in order for it to be evaluated as true whereas an or only one part of the or comparison has to be true and that's generally where logic errors occur ors and ands and they can kind of greater than and less than and you spot that by testing the output from your program to make sure it matches your expectations now throughout your course you should be ensuring that whatever programming language you're using that you're making sure your code is readable so that others can understand it and there's loads of different ways that you can ensure your code is readable so internal commentary by explaining what each line of code in your program is doing it means it's more maintainable for other people to come along later on or if your teachers try to help you understand your code if you're trying to explain what you're doing, it means people can understand what the line of code is trying to achieve. Other good things to make it more readable is indentation, which can show where for loops and do while loops, conditional loops and uh, fixed loops all start and end, where if statements start and end, and that makes it much more easy to understand and spot any missing code. Uh, meaningful variable names, rather than having variables called X, Y and Z, it would make more sense to give them a sensible name that just by reading the name people would know what the variable is used for 
and there's loads of other ways to make your code even more readable and uh, you'll learn about creating modular programs uh, if you choose to continue higher and you should also be trying to keep blank lines in your code to uh, just break it up and make it again easier to read. So again, really short unit, but a lot of information and a lot of potential questions that can come up in the exam.